I always practice my King Jameth. <laughs> but in all of any type of devotion or any type of time that you set apart in order to converse with God or to hear God speak or to understand in your heart that God is operating in your life or for some way for him to work your circumstances all of these whether it be in devotions or whether watching a video like in evotional or whether it be reading your bible on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whether you go to church or whether you pray daily or whether you have a certain set time god doesn't condemn you for not doing what you think you ought to do rather god wants to involve you in what he is doing so he gives us instructions in his word of how we can live a better life than the life that we're living currently a lot of times people live a life that's detrimental to their health that will cause them eventually to die a lot of times people live a life that will cause them to eventually if it's eternally they remain in the same place without god wind up in hell and they will be cast into the lake of fire so in instructing us in the way we should go god gives us the opportunity to participate with him in a real and genuine way by either speaking to you where you're at as you are in your present circumstances by making them fit together cooperatively that they just seem to go right in there and god seems to say something and it seems to fit and you go yeah that's god speaking or sometimes god can speak directly to you he can like i'm doing with my mouth he can speak to you and you can hear him audibly you can sense him as he says god speaks in a still small voice in the side of you because literally god said he would come into you and he would abide in you and that you'd be able to sense in your heart that he's speaking to you so in all of these things we know that god is the one who determines what's best for us we don't make the choices to say oh i'm sorry you know god can't speak through that donkey Balaam. i'm sorry you know that wasn't scriptural balaam can't be the one that you know the donkey can't be the one that god's using you know so you're just gonna have to go ahead and ride that donkey forward and let that angel kill you because guess what god doesn't use donkeys right god can't use devotionals right god can't use scriptures right god can't and immediately you're wrong because god can so whatever god uses to speak to you if it fits then do it and trust him to work out the solutions for how he applies it to you because anytime you say god can't you're wrong God will just to make it right in Spurgeon let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn downcast and troubled Christian come and glean today in the broad field of promise here are abundance of precious promises which exactly meet thy wants take this one he will not break the bruised reed nor quench the smoking flax doth not that suit thy case a reed helpless, insignificant, and weak. A bruised reed out of which no music can come, weaker than weakness itself. A reed, and that reed bruised, yet he will not break. But on the contrary, will restore and strengthen you. Thou art like a smoking flax. No light, no warmth can come from thee, but he will not quench thee. He will blow with his sweet breath of mercy till he fans the flames that you are, till he fans that which you are into flame. Wouldst thou canst glean another ear? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What soft words! Thy heart is tender, and the master knows it, and therefore he speaks so gently to you. Will you not obey him and come to him even now? Take another ear of corn. Fear not, thou worm of Jacob, I will help you, saith the Lord and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. How can you fear after such a wonderful assurance as this? Thou mayst gather ten thousand such golden ears as these. I have blotted out thy sins like a cloud, and thy 
and like a thick cloud your transgressions. Or this, though your sins be as scarlet, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as white as wool. Or this, the spirit and the bride say come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. Our master's field is very rich. Behold the handfuls. See, there they lie before you, poor timid believer. Gather them up and make them yours. Jesus bids that you take them. Be not afraid, only believe. Grasp these sweet promises and thresh them out by meditation and feed on them. And feed on them with joy. Boy, when King Jameth talketh in Spurgeoneth, <laughs> it always flows and rhymes. But in saying such things, these are the reassurances that God gives us by promises in his word that he does for us. Why we can trust him isn't a matter of faith. It's a matter of confidence. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. But God's promises are all true and he's already proven them. So it's not faith to believe in God that he will take care of you. It's a scientific, provable fact that God will provide, that God will abide, that God will forgive, that God will heal, that God will love, that God will hear, that God will teach, that God will guide, that God will be with you in all things. You're forward, you're upward, you're downward, you're sitting, you're uprising, you're down sitting. In all these things that all of Scripture reveals the reality that you don't need to have great, unbelievable faith in God. But it's just a practical realization, a very practical faith, a very scientifically provable demonstration of trust because God does. So you can make it into complications and make it into some great exercise, some great demonstration. You can become, ooh, ah, uh, oh, hmm. Or you could just simply be like a child and you just trust them after all. Isn't that what Jesus said? Except you become as little children. <laughs>